Oh, oh my god. god. Is that good? Oh, what? What was that? Oh my gosh. Hook gang god. Oh, oh he's still alive. He's still alive. He's good. Oh my god. Oh but my he's goodness. in the corner. I respect that. Did he block? Turn Did that he button. block? Turn oh, that no, button. no, no. Of course he did it. He got chucked, brother. Okay. You clearly see he's getting chucked. Damn! That hurt so much. Oh, and oh. this is about to be a real match. Oh, oh. my goodness. That was disrespectful. And, he, that and he's saying, like, wow. Hook gang god takes it. Jersey. He's your NLBC 107 Jersey. champion. Now, Otto is over here eyeballing us right now. Hook Gang God. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Born Free here. We're at Next Level at Super TSB, and I am with Hook Gang God. How the hell are you, man? How are you, man? I'm good. I'm good. It's looking good for me, Super TSB. So. So it's a weird environment for the interview, but it's cool. You know, it's looking nice. I get it. it's windy, but it's cool. <laughs> this is my first garden interview, so uh, yeah, I think it is. I think it, <laughs> the first garden interview. Is I think it's garden, garden, oh, first garden interview. Uh, so, I don't know. Yeah, it's yeah. it's kind of weird in New York being outside at, at this. Yeah. You know, it should be summer already, but it's not. But uh, so listen, man, let's just jump into it because I know you got pulled soon. So. Um, I want to ask you, Hook Gang God, where's that, where that name come from? <laughs> That's like the million dollar question. Like, so many people ask me that like on the regular in my stream, just constantly asking me, but I guess I'll reveal it now. Well, not really, but Hook is an inside joke from like third grade that me and my friends made up. I can't say it now because it's a little uh, but it's an inside joke, Hook. And then the gang part of my name, since my friends literally just love saying that word like after anything, it would be like, oh, uh, you got you guys got pizza? They'd be like, yeah. They'd be like, gang, shit like that. Or I could curse, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> Can I curse? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So shit like that. So that's how they say gang. And God, it just sounded funny. I made it on a on a whim, honestly. It was just like. When did you first make it? And how did it stick? D D B F Z. Like you know, like if you when you start up the game, mm -hmm. it um it tells you to pick a name. Ah. If you don't want to use your regular PSN, so they asked me, and I was just like. It took me a while to figure it out. I was just like, damn, what, what could I make up that sounds good enough? Because I don't want to keep using Because my old tech was Eduardo Hook. I didn't want to keep using it because it, it just doesn't sound as cool as, you know, Hook Gang God is. So I was just like, all right, Hook. I'm going to keep Hook because it wasn't my last tag. Gang, why not? Because I keep saying it over and over with my friends. And then I was like, God, Hook Gang God. I think it's a pretty cool name, but I don't know what hook means. So when we find out what that means, it's probably going to be some deviant shit. And uh, that's going to be the downfall of Hook Gang God. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's talk a little bit about your background. I know that you sort of talk about yourself being an online warrior. Yes. So let, let's start with uh, where are you from? And also, what was your first fighting game experience? Well, I'm from New Jersey, okay. so I'm really close from the NY area. And this is where, like... I made my name out here since I was always playing online. I feel like East Coast is really strong in, in, in the games that I play. Mm -hmm. The first game that I ever played that I tried to get like serious, not really serious because I never went out to play it, but I wanted to get good, it was Persona 4 Arena, which was made by the same people who made DBZ, yeah. which transferred over like tr like great for, oh, really? for DBZ. So that's why I feel like all those years I was playing Persona and of course Guilty Gear. I was playing Persona, Guilty Gear, it like my skill level just transferred over to DBFZ, and since it's a little easier than Guilty Gear, I feel like I, I, I do a lot better in that game. It, even though it hasn't been out too long, I feel like I'm pretty strong overall. But when you so was Persona 4 the first fighting game that you ever played, or was it the, uh, that was the first one you took seriously? Yeah, the first one I took seriously. The first one I played was probably Street Fighter 2, you know, like as a kid. But at that time, it was like I never thought people you know went out and actually played tournaments and that i was i was oblivious to that i was like playing shooters and stuff so, like that so what made you play persona 4 seriously um i probably saw i saw my friend like my cousins play blaze blue and i was just like this game looks cool but it's a little too anime-ish for me so i was just like whatever and then at the time it like when that happened, I was interested though about Blaze Blue, but it was looking too crazy for me. A lot of characters and stuff. I was just like, mm. then Persona. When I heard about Persona coming out, it literally like when I heard about it coming out, it came out like two days later. So I was just like, oh, this looks cool. High school students fighting in a fighting game. I was like, okay, sounds cool. Whatever. I, I bought it, and after that, I just fell in love with the game. I fell in love with the series as a whole too. I, I started playing all the RPGs as well. So once that 
after that, I was just like, I have to be like the best at this game. Even though I never went out, because I was at the time I was like 250, 280 in weight, so I was just, I was like not comfortable. Yeah, really, I was not comfortable going outside the way I was at the time. So I was just like. I'll just stay inside, play online and whatever. Oh, okay, yeah. all right. So, uh, damn, I have so many questions now. Uh, all right, so, okay, the first thing is, damn, I want to ask you about weight. Okay, we'll, we'll hold on to that one second. First of all, I just want to know, why, what made you want to be the best and what steps did you take the, you, to, to become the best? When I say the best, I mean, like, yeah, one of the best. One of them. Well, with Persona, I felt like, since it wasn't really that big... I, I was playing like constantly good players over and over and over and over again and it just leveled me up I, after a while I realized I was good at playing like mind games which is what well, fighting games is, has a big factor I felt like I was really strong when it comes to reading my opponent so I kept playing online and stuff like that and then after a while I just got I just got good I guess you could say <laughs> So it wasn't, it wasn't like, uh, okay, I'm going to break this down, I'm going to train, I'm going to uh, read this, I'm going to watch that. I feel like now, since I'm playing this game seriously, I feel like I have to start doing that now. Like, I never really study anything when I play. At, right now, I'm trying to do that now because I feel like it's important to win. So, But back then, like my persona, I would just play. And I, I felt like I, I was always better, so that just helped me. I guess I'll, I'll play my opponent at times. I was just confident in my play. But right now, I feel like since it's really important to win, I feel like I definitely need to start doing what top players do, which is study the game, study opponents, stuff like that. I definitely need to like learn more stuff and practice mode as well. Like all the all the characters, I need to learn them like in depth to to be really strong. Right. All right. Well, we'll get onto that uh, as well, actually. Uh, so now I want to go back and just ask you about. Uh, the weight, right? So it sounds it sounds like you said you're uncomfortable about going out. Uh, you know, talk to me about that. What, what, tell me a little, little bit about that story about uh, from from there to, to where you are now. Okay, so um, all my life I was uh, I was fat, pretty much. I was 250 and up, 280 stuff like that. Like I was crazy fat. Like at at the time I was just like whatever. Um, I'm too. I, I don't feel. I didn't just didn't feel comfortable. I feel like people would judge me. Right now, I don't care. Like that's out the window. Cause I, f I felt like once I lost the weight, I, I was like, I don't give a fuck what nobody thinks about me. I'll just come here. I'm a player. That's what I, I want to do. But at the time, I was just like, damn, people were gonna judge me. Like, I felt um really really uncomfortable. That really changed though. It's crazy. After I lost all the weight, I was just like. How did, that, how did you lose the weight? Did you make a concerted effort to do that or did you just like one day just kind of um, change like habits? My or? senior year of high school, I was just like, I'm tired of being fat. Like I just didn't want to be fat anymore. And I was just like, um, I asked my friend, he was fat at one point. He was really like buff at the time. So I was just like, yo, what did you do, man? He just told me all the steps. He was like, yo, work out at least five days a week, eat right. And that's what I did for like nine months. It took me like nine months to lose like 120 pounds. Just, yeah, I mean, okay, all right, that, that's a whole nother fucking podcast and interview, so uh, I'm always fascinated by that stuff myself. Um, what, what's been your uh, proudest moment so far, like, in, in fighting games? Because I know you play a bit of Guilty Gear as well, you play Persona 4, so just, uh, I always like to ask that question too. My proudest too. moment is that I have a, like, I have a pretty decent following. I feel like people really stuck with my name, and then once they met, like, met me and figured out how I was... Like people stuck around. Like I have a, I stream and stuff. So I, and I average a pr good amount of years. So I feel like I'm really proud that a lot of people are giving me a chance. And you know, it's crazy because before I was, you know, very underconfident and whatever. But nowadays it's just like I'm really grateful for all the people. So right now, since I haven't really gone to majors and stuff, um, for now that's like my proudest thing that. I've gotten this far, like I got a, a big sponsor, shout out Energy. I got a really big sponsor, plus a really like a decent following, and I've haven't been I've been playing for like what, uh, well offline been playing for like two months maybe a month or so, and I'm I'm making waves out here. Like people know me when it comes to DBZ, which makes me happy. <laughs> how did that feel? Did that have to did it feel like that happened overnight? And that, how did it, how did it feel when it happened? I uh, felt like it, it literally happened after I won NLBC that one Wednesday that uh, Sonic Fox wasn't there. So after that, people and the commentator uh, shout out Yipes. He was just like, "Hook gang God." <laughs> after that, it blew up. Everybody was like, "Hook gang God." In the chat, every time I'm on stream, "Hook gang God," "Hook gang God." The whole stream, "Hook gang God," "Hook gang God," "Hook gang God." I'm just like, that feels good, man. It powers me up. 
Thank you, guys. If I All right, so I mean, I'll put links to your stream down below, but I'm sure yes. it won't be hard for people <laughs> to find. Um, so coming from offline to online, did you have any difficulty with that at all? Like going going from like sitting in your house playing people online in your own environment mm -hmm. to coming here to changing setups and all that sort of stuff. Like what was the experience like and, and did it take you long to get used to it? Um, I mean, clearly it didn't. Yeah, I mean, honestly, not really. I felt like at first, like my very first tournament, I was super nervous. Super, super, super nervous. But... I feel like since I won that tournament, I, I, I just got confident in my play. I was just like, I think I can just do this. I mean, at the time, I was just like, damn, I might lose. Like, I, I, all I did is play online, and now I'm going to go offline. Like, I'm going to get bodied or whatever. I felt that way. But when I played the game, and I, I had to beat, um, it was Lord Knight was there at my first tournament. And I when I beat him, I was just like, oh, damn, I might have a chance maybe. So then that's when I went to NLBC, and then I won that one too, and then that's where I am now but it it was a hard transition at first because the delay really matters I didn't think it would since you know sometimes it would be like one frame delay matches or whatever I thought it was whatever but once I played offline I was like damn that really matters it playing online I, I wouldn't play online the same anymore I feel like it's not it's not worth it as much as playing offline I realize that now uh, okay so you say so you don't play as much online anymore or the only time I play is to stream that's it. I, I wouldn't play the game as for like for real for practice online no more. Cause, okay. I, well, there's that, and then the fact that nobody beats me online. Like nobody beats me online. I would go days without losing a match type thing. So I'm just like, this is not worth it anymore. No, it, Cause all the competition that's offline, they're not playing online. That's why. So I'm just like, it, it's not worth it anymore. I'll just stream it, of course, cause that's for a good time or whatever. But. For real practice, I have to keep coming here. Keep coming here, keep going out to my locals and stuff like that. So. All right, so, all right, a lot of confidence. So let, let me ask you this. That's a challenge for people online, by the way. Uh, <laughs> people have to come on your stream and, uh, you know, what do they call it, stream bot? Oh, I forget the name, term. Stream sniping, that's yeah. it. Um, so you didn't feel nervous, like, when, when you played offline? Here, uh, like on stream. The very first time? Oh, of course, because then there was an actual camera on me, like with like what, nine thousand people watching me. I was super, super uh, nervous. Okay. But after I won it, I was just like, it doesn't matter. Like they're watching me to play, and it, as of now, when I play, it doesn't really get to me as much. So sometimes it, the nervousness, because it's a close match stuff, stuff like that. It never, I never get nervous because people are watching. I get nervous because like it's really close, and like. I, and like you know it's actually a, a a match that matters it's not online where if you lose you lose it's whatever but here it, it's it matters so sometimes i get nervous but for the most part i keep my composure i never really choke so bad okay like, yeah okay uh, all right let's talk about your team right so tell me tell me what your team is tell me the order of your team and tell me why your team is what it is basically like why you picked it my real my legitimate main team is goku black Piccolo and Vegeta. The reason I picked Pic Piccolo was because he's like he's like one of my favorite characters in DBZ. Free, like he's so cool. Um, Goku Black, I felt like I, I just picked him on a whim, and he happened to be good. Vegeta, I, I picked him because his assist is too godlike. Like when I played the beta, I was like, his assist is way too way too godlike for me not to to pass up right now. And it, he works really well with Piccolo, so I was just like, hmm, who would work well with Piccolo and Vegeta? So I just like, hmm, Goku Black, I picked him. And I also use Cell on the side because I feel like at, since I picked Goku Black on a whim, he doesn't really work as much like when it comes to mix-ups. So that's why I have Cell on the side, and I play him whenever I could since he's really easy to pick up. But, yeah, Piccolo is like the – if this was a 1v1 game, I would only pick Piccolo. Like, that's it. I wouldn't play anybody else. So, like, Piccolo is like – that. that's the character that yep. you watching Dragon Ball, you were like – that's my that's my boy. Yeah, sadly, he doesn't get as much screen time, but he he to me he's cool. Yeah, he doesn't anymore. <laughs> in, yeah, super, yeah. in super, he's like yeah. I don't know. I was watching an episode the other day and shit, and Bulma had him making up the garden and stuff. Yeah, he, like, he's disrespected, but he's dis yeah, it's he okay. It's true. okay. A lot of characters are at the moment. Yeah. Um, all right. So, uh, did was that literally the team you picked initially, or did it? Or was there another team and then it evolved? Yeah, my initial team was actually just Goku, Piccolo, and Vegeta. But then I felt like Goku is not better than Goku Black, so I just picked Goku Black. And okay. they both have beam assist, which is works really well with Piccolo. So I was just like, okay, I'll just pick Goku Black since he's the better Goku. Well, 
to me. He might not be. Maybe. I'm, it, it's it's hard to tell now, but for now, yeah, I think Goku Black is better than Goku. So I was just like, oh, he has a beam assist? Okay. He, he works with Piccolo. My team is like made around Piccolo pretty much. Okay. Yeah. So, so any changes in the future? I don't know if you're thinking about it, but I often ask, are you thinking about any changes? Do you feel like there are any weaknesses in your team uh, where, Piccolo. where <laughs> it's Piccolo? <laughs> yeah. But I don't know if you keep up with the game like that, but Piccolo is like, he's bad. Like, he sucks. I, I hear like different, differing opinions on it. He, you know? He, like, I'm the Piccolo main. He's not that good, sadly. But it, uh, that's also one thing that I forgot to mention. Like, it was Hook Gang God that made me like big, but it was also Piccolo. Because nobody played Piccolo. Yeah, yeah. It was just, so um that that's why it's kind of like hard to like let go of him because he's like he's my favorite character and a lot of people love my piccolo play but at the same time he's weak compared to you know kid boo or you know 16 or whatever those are top tier characters and piccolo is just like way lower than them like he's like super fair and it, it really hurts my team i feel like even though i still win i feel like i win against opponents because I'm just the better player not because my my characters really carry me like that but uh, when it comes to equal skill the team matters so it, that's why it's kind of tough I, I want to switch them but at the same time I, I can't right now well there's an incoming patch right so let's yeah, let, yeah. I, that, let's talk about that real quick um, I think Piccolo was featured in the slide yeah, that they showed uh, what do you what do you think you, they're gonna what do you, what do you, what are your thoughts being a Piccolo main? What do you think they're gonna do to Piccolo? Oh man, uh, to be honest, I have no idea what they could do, but he needs to be buffed. Like, if they don't buff him, then they literally hate Piccolo, and I can't use him. Okay. If he's nerfed, I can't use him. So let me ask you this, like, and and I want a sort of a I want a fair answer, right? Not a not a because I've asked this question of like Haitani, Takedo, uh, like all sorts of people about their characters, about what would you have buffed and. Some people just go way over the top, oh, yeah, right? Yeah, but would wh what would you feel would be like a fair? What would you do to Piccolo if you were a game developer? Um, make his hell zone. You know the hell zone grenade super. Uh -huh. Make it legit. Like it's problem. When I started using him, like nobody knew how to really counter the hell zone grenade, which is like a lot of balls like appear and then you can do mix ups with them. And at the time, nobody really knew what to do against that. So. Now that the game has developed a little more, people have figured it out, I would say. And I r literally almost can never use it anymore because it's, it's not good enough. So if they were to buff anything, please just let him get a legitimate Hells on Grenade mix-up. Please. But it's like there's too much things to worry about. when, Like if I do it, there's a risk. There's too many things that the opponent can do that I can't catch all, every t like I can't read all the options that he can do. So it's tough. It's really tough. But if they would do that and give him a knockdown, please. He he needs meter for a sliding knockdown, which is horrible. That's horrible. There's times where the opponent has like this much health and I can't kill him because I don't have enough meter. It's it's horrible. Like he really sucks. <laughs> but I love him. So Oxus, please. Yeah, please, please give him hell zone. Give him a knockdown with no meter. He doesn't. He, that's not even fair. Everybody else has it. It's like not fair at all. But it's okay. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about the patch itself. Yeah. What are your hopes for the actual patch? Um, Vegeta is getting getting destroyed. I, that's what I feel like. I feel like there's so much Vegeta players, and his assist is so broken that it might just be gone. And I mean. That, that changes a lot of things, honestly, because since everybody plays them and it's so good and neutral, it's going to change how people play, I feel. And at, at the same time, I feel like I know Cell wasn't featured there, but they said etc. I believe. So I feel like he's still going to get fixed, maybe, because as of right now, the meta is either Cell, Kid Buu or Vegeta. That's it. That's literally if you don't have any of those three or 16 or Gohan, you, your team is like not good, I would say. So. I hope that with the incoming patch, I hope that they at least make the weaker characters on their level. Like, I wouldn't mind if the game is all buffed up and stuff like that and whatever, as long as everybody is allowed to do that. Because, you know, Cell is literally two, two hits and you're dead. 
and Piccolo is like maybe four, maybe five. Like it's it's crazy. The the difference is kind of crazy. At first, I thought it was as I thought it was balanced, but not really. I don't feel like that's why you see so many cells, so many Vegetas, so many Kid Boos, so many Sixteens because they're they're the top. They're at the top. Yeah. I did think it was weird that Cell wasn't on that slide. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, he is the fairest top tier, though. That, that's how I feel. Like. Right. Compared to the others, he's definitely the fairest one, for sure. Well, I mean, maybe that's the sign. Maybe it's like we're yeah. going to try and buff everyone up to like Cell's level. Yeah, if they do that, that would be great. That, that's legit. Like, I, I would think that would be great. But mm. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Now, the other part of the patch was actual gameplay mechanics. Oh, so, yeah. oh. so is, are there things that you are hoping for or you... Or, or for instance, you think they will change? Um, guard cancel is horrible. Oh, yeah. They need to change that. Like that, it's horrible. Um, they might fix up super dash a little bit because it's like it's it's really wonky. Like sometimes they would just just go all the way to the other side of the map without um, the character. It would like completely miss the character and just go somewhere. I'm just like what? And it's it's weird. Like maybe they'll fix that. Um, the guard cancel is horrible, so they need to fix that as well. Um, game mechanic maybe they'll change something with sparking who knows that I really don't know I'm surprised that they're willing to change the game mechanics like that that that's not really like common when it comes to anime fighting games like usually they just change the characters up and then um, that's about it for the patch but and it's a free patch too and they're doing a whole they're like changing everything apparently so that's crazy to me I mean it's a huge yeah. game yeah. So, that's you know. that's probably why because all the other games they literally a patch comes out a year later or yeah. stuff like that but I guess DBZ is so big it broke the cycle of yeah. anime literally maybe I mean it's exciting it's exciting yeah, of course I'm sure. glad because I didn't want to see so Vegeta so Vegeta in top 8 and Evo that was going to be literally everybody seeing with with a character of their choice is like so Vegeta character of choice that's that's literally going to be top 8 maybe so Vegeta Piccolo yeah no, I wish <laughs> <laughs> I wish all right let me ask you a couple of questions uh, regarding the current um, uh, uh, gameplay mm -hmm. Uh, I, I always love asking about Shenron. Have you had a Shenron moment? <laughs> um, on stream, I believe so, yeah. yeah. But never in a match, because I feel like nobody, it's not worth it. It's not, for you to do that, it's like you're throwing away so much damage, like, to someone's health. Because the way it works is, you gotta, like, do an assist. I mean, not assist. You gotta do the, the whole, the full auto combo for to get a Dragon Ball or whatever. You would be throwing away so much damage by just trying to do you know auto combo the whole match for seven times which is a lot so it's um it's rough but maybe one day imagine grand finals evo is I, I keep saying grand finals evo like you know that you, would you, be you, you got, crazy yeah you got one character you got seven bars like you know because it's t you know obviously you need seven bars and you need to yeah, do the auto combo and all that sort of stuff. stuff you need yeah I mean, do, you, do you have moments where you're like oh shit there's seven dragon balls right now like <laughs> nah, not currently it hasn't happened to me yet but um, sometimes you keep an eye on it. Do you see yeah, it? Yeah, like, sometimes, sometimes. Um, whenever it gets to like six or five, then I'm like, okay, uh, it might be a factor, maybe. But for the most part, it never happens because nobody does. Nobody does auto combo, literally. So, no, that that indeed makes sense. Yeah. Um, so, also want to ask you about sparking. Do you ever, uh, you know, the, sp the way sparking has been used has changed very rapidly over a very short period oh, of time. Yeah, um, <laughs> do you have a specific set of rules about sparking? Um, about how you use it? It depends on the team I'm playing. Like, if I'm playing Piccolo, like um, Goku Black, Piccolo, and Vegeta, I feel like saving all, saving them all with level one sparking is worth it for sure. Cause like Goku Black, well, the way my team works, Goku Black plays the neutral, Piccolo does the mix-ups, and Vegeta does the assist work. So if one of them dies, my team is like, it's shaky. Uh, I feel like I feel like. Uh, before the meta was just like oh level three sparking is too good it's too good but after in high level it doesn't matter like you can just get outplayed completely and you lost two characters already so i feel like also um since like if you get caught blocking like once that could be done your character could be done it's like marvel in that way so sometimes you just have to save them you have to save your character because then your character has another chance of life and of course depending on the character you save like of course if you save so Oh, 100% worth it every time. He's too good to let him die. So, yeah, that's uh, it's crazy how fast it changed though. After Goichi oh, played, right. yeah, Goichi changed the world. That one. I, actually, I remember when Chris G did it. 
and 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 he beat Sonic, and then Sonic beat him back in Grand Finals. This was at Winter Brawl, I think. Yeah. And uh, and then I think Sonic had said at the time, like he didn't he didn't like the way that Chris was using Sparking, but uh, but then it all changed a week later, you know. Yeah. The same way that you know, like Vegeta sucks one week and then the next week he doesn't. So. Yeah, it's like um, it. At, he was thinking ahead, like that was the future. I feel like because. Back then, I feel like Super Dashing was, like, you know, it was still really early, so level 3 Spargon was scary or whatever, but after a while, like, people really figured out how to outplay, like, other characters, so you have to keep them alive. Like, it's literally worth it every time. I mean, I think that, that in order to keep, like, the pressure, I mean, listen, you know this better than I do, but, like, I'm saying this for the sake of our conversation and people out there, like, it, the way I look at it, at least, you know, not being, not, you know, this one one of my first like team games mm -hmm. is is that in order to keep that pressure on going, you need assists, right? And yeah. if you don't have anybody to assist, yeah, literally, that's <laughs> that's why that's what I'm saying. Like, you cannot let Vegeta die. Like, that's that's crazy, especially if your team revolves around him for damage, for mix-ups. Like, you need him on the team. That's why if he's getting like bodied in the corner, just do it. It's not worth it. It's not worth the mix-ups. It's not worth the blocking. Whatever, just do it. But maybe that will change. Who knows? I feel like that might be the best way to use Sparking at the moment, though. Definitely saving a character, for sure. The first character. All right. Do you think there's any characters in the game right now? I know it's all going to change pretty soon by the sounds of it, but do you think there's any characters that uh, are still being slept on? Mm, maybe Gotenks at the moment. Um, maybe not because Sonic's using him. But hey, I mean, yeah, of course. Uh, before it was him. Before it was him. Yeah, um... Uh, other than that, I don't think so. Honestly, I feel like they're just not in compare. They just don't compare to the top right now. Kid Buu, 16, uh, and the Dog Gohan, Cell. They're just they're on another level, and I feel like since they are that good, it doesn't give the other characters time to develop at all. So, yeah, sadly, uh, I don't think nobody else. Maybe um, Blue Vegeta. Maybe he has potential. Um, yeah, that's about it. I think. No, maybe um, maybe Broly too, since he's new. Like not many people know. Everybody knows Bardock is good though. Bardock is ridiculous. Uh, yeah, let's talk about that. Okay, let's talk about Broly and Bardock. So give me your thoughts on Broly first. Um, Broly, I feel like for some reason his damage is kind of low, considering he's like you know supposed to be super strong or whatever. He's kind of low. Little, he's kind of the biggest character in the game. So the mix-ups on him are ridiculous already. Um, yeah, his damage is just a little low, and not many people play him either. So it's like, no, not many people know what to do sometimes. But for the most part, um, no, nobody at a really, really high level is playing him like that. So we'll we'll never know until somebody does. Okay. Uh, do you think uh, you so you think uh, the the potential for him is to to give him more damage, basically? Yeah, maybe more a little more damage, maybe um, maybe a little faster. Like I feel like it's a uh, he he loses to like a whole bunch of mix-ups and stuff. Like if he gets caught blocking, it's like he's pretty much dead. Like and his damage isn't. He, I don't know. His corner combo is weird too. It like takes him out of the corner. I'm like what? <laughs> but whatever. Yeah. Right, so tell me about Bardock. Bardock is ridiculous. Like he has he's really really mix-up heavy, and he has really good buttons as well. So I feel like he. Maybe over time he might be a top tier, maybe. But um, the way Goichi was playing, I'm not sure if you know, but he was playing him at tournaments and he was just like dominating. Still, no Gohan. He was instead of using Gohan, he was using Bardock, and he was still dominating. Like, which is kind of crazy. But he is really. You think of Goichi is like if you don't have Gohan, like you, <laughs> that's no, how you can't. Not, not, not you, not not you. But I mean, like, yeah. like I, I, not you, obviously. Yeah. But I think like. When you look at Luigi, you go, well, what would happen if you took go like adult Gohan out of the mix, yeah. you know? Yeah, um, of course, adult Gohan is like his, the craziest character yeah. for him. But to see him still dominate with Bardock, which is he's like really new, it's like it, it gives him a lot of potential. A lot of people are starting to pick him up cause, because of that, because they see the potential that he's still winning with him. So, yeah, uh, I think Bardock is really good. But uh, in due time, we'll see if he stays top or not. So did you see, uh, you guys must have seen uh, the Vegito trailer today, and you, you saw the uh, Yamasu, oh my god, I can't Zamasu. Zamasu. Uh, so uh, let's talk about those two. So Zamasu, it looks like, has sort of a floaty eight-way 
Arts Movement. Um, and, and so talk to me about that, uh, Zamasu first. Um, Zamasu, he might play similar to a Blazable character, like um, Blazable character no, uh, known as like New 13. I mean, not New 13. Um, there's like, Mm. It's like a similar character where they like float around. I'm I'm sure in Blaze Blue. I'm not too sure of the name since I don't really play the game like that. But it, it's like they just fly around and stuff like that. Which maybe like also like Magneto because he does the same thing in Marvel. So um, not too sure what to expect since he flies around. Maybe he doesn't have that much good mix up. So who knows? I I have no idea for him. Is that the kind of character that you would would like to play, or is that the kind of character where you're just like eh? No, nah, I wouldn't play him literally because of the A-way dash. Like, I, I feel like I, I don't like that flying type of thing. I'll see, though. Maybe. Okay. Maybe the, he'll change it. Maybe. So we saw Vegito, literally the Vegito trailer dropped, to like I want to say, three hours ago or something yeah. like that, right? So you probably had a quick look at it. I think the main thing which stood out from that trailer was probably the beam sword oh, yeah, thing. Um, I mean, do you, what thoughts do you have on that trailer? Um, I'm not going to lie. I might use him. The, the only thing that I want him to have is a 2L low. Because what happens is with Goku Black, he doesn't have a 2L low, which is the basically a low punch. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's crucial in this game. Not having a 2L or a 2L low is super, like, ridiculous. Like, because that, 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 it makes the, the character, like, not as mix-up heavy because yes. of that. So yeah. he, if he doesn't have that, then I don't know if I'm going to pick him up, honestly. Okay. Like, my character needs that. That's why I, that's why I picked up Cell in the first place, because Goku Black doesn't have one. If he had the one though, he'd be like super top, literally. But not having a two L O is super is like really crucial. I'm glad Piccolo. If Piccolo didn't have it, I probably wouldn't use him either. Then he'd be trash, literally. But he has one. Vegeta has one. Um, Cell has one. You know, Kid Buu has one. Yeah. All the top has one, no, basically. Yeah, yeah. It makes, it totally makes sense. Um, so talking of characters, it seems like the leak is probably correct. So the yeah. leak that that would mean that we would see base. Uh, Vegeta based Goku, we would see uh, a Tournament of Power uh, Android 17 and Cooler. So out of those four characters, even though you haven't seen their gameplay, uh, just from a sort of, I don't know, mm -hmm. a anime type of uh, deal, uh, are you interested in any of those characters? Um, Cooler sounds cool. I, I'm not going to lie. No pun intended. He, he, I, I always thought he was a cool design. Um, I'm not sure which form they'll pick for him, but whichever one is cool, I guess. Um, it has to be the the like one where he's shaped with the horn, like the final oh, form. The third one, yeah, with the mask in it. Yeah. Third one? Like yeah, I believe it might be the fourth one. I'm not too I, sure. I, I haven't seen I that in a minute. Yeah, I can't yeah, see it for a while, but yeah. yeah. It might be the fourth one, but he has the mask and stuff with the yeah, red yeah, eyes. Yeah. yeah, that's that one's legit. Um, 17, he should have been in the game at on drop. Honestly, he's one of the coolest characters in DBZ Free, but they gave him to 18. Like what? <laughs> well, it's okay. He's in now. I think I think it made sense because Super hadn't finished when the game dropped. Yeah. Like it made sense because He's well, like the MVP. I, I, you know, <laughs> I I have a friend who hasn't watched all of Super yet, so yeah. I don't want to give too many spoilers away. But like, yeah, he's the MVP. Yeah, he's he the, MVP. the MVP. So he deserved a spot, yeah. but definitely, I'll also try picking him up. Maybe we'll see what he can do. Um, who else is there? Um, uh, then you got the base forms. Base forms. So I feel like that is. I mean, Goku would have the. Uh, Kaio can maybe. Uh, oh, it's Spirit Bomb. Spirit Bomb. Yeah, the Spirit Bomb. <laughs> um, I feel like it's like. I'm doing it. Like I'm giving her. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's like. Mm, they should have. They could have honestly put somebody else. But since the leak is true, it's basically like they're in the game now. Um, I guess base form. Like like I said before, he needs to add too well low to be decent. So if he doesn't have that, then. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, base form Vegeta though. Sorry to cut you off. Base form Vegeta is like, again, what can be better than the assist he has and the DP he has already? Like, what can be better than that? If he doesn't have neither of those and he his neutral game is weird, then he's like, what's the point? Like, literally. I, I, yeah, I don't know if it would be like a. For me, it would be more like what would come to the game is maybe some cool dramatic finishes, maybe yeah. some cool intros. You know, all that other stuff that surrounds it. Um, I don't know what would come gameplay wise though yeah yeah you know yeah. I, I agree with you on that one um, so let's talk so are there any other characters in the Dragon Ball universe that you would like to see come to this game um, another Piccolo <laughs> huh? another Piccolo that's better <laughs> another Namekian maybe? yeah another Namekian <laughs> but they probably won't it won't happen but that's about it uh, maybe Janemba from the movie he's yeah. pretty cool yeah um, okay. other than that not really not not many come to mind so but we'll see um, so 
Beyond characters, let's talk a little bit about uh, current competition, right? So at the moment, you know, you've got this back and forth with Sonic Fox. Mm -hmm. um, you talked a little bit about like maybe having to take this a little bit more seriously in terms yeah. of the way you train. Yeah, like uh, can you give me a little window into like how you're thinking about your back and forth with Sonic? Um, right now, he definitely has the upper hand on me. Definitely, I feel like not only is he like a little like better than me, but I feel like my characters are also holding me back. Like I said before, Piccolo sucks. But um, since, you know, I have hope now for him, for Piccolo since the new patch is coming out. But if he sucks again, then I, I literally have to drop him, sadly. Um, I have to win. Like, I feel like whenever I play against Sonic with Piccolo, it's like not much I can do because he's really limited to his things. And for me to truly take back and forth like go back and forth with Sonic I would need a better team definitely even though he so he definitely like has the upper hand on me now but um my team like I'm not saying it's fully my team's fault but it kind of like it is like 50 50 like it's also my gameplay but it's also my team too that's like holding me back so the gameplay of course I can I can like fix up and whatever but I feel like I I really want to have Piccolo on the team I don't want to drop him but He's looking very. Yeah, I mean, very, you're sponsored now. Like maybe yeah. I don't know, man. Like it, like it, these these are interesting things because sometimes you pick top tier characters and you find out I don't have the passion for it, and then that yeah. that affects things. So yeah, literally, that's why when I play Cell, I always say it to everybody I meet that play Cell. I'm just like, Yo, Cell is so boring. He's so boring. Yeah. Like he's not Piccolo fun. He's not Goku Black fun. Like he's and boring. Also, like you, like you said, you stood out because of Piccolo. You know, yeah. like so sometimes you know a lot of a lot of this world that we're in. You know, mm -hmm. this world of I, I don't want to call it FG esports exactly right now, but like mm -hmm. FGC streaming personalities, sponsorships, all that stuff. You know, it's it's not just about winning. It's about being entertaining. It's yeah. about being that the Piccolo guy or whatever. Exactly. You know, exactly. So, so. yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of people know me as Piccolo. A lot of people are just like, yeah, if you drop Piccolo over, I'm on following this yeah. and that. But, well, um, if you don't follow me because of that, then I guess you never cared about me in the first place. Well, so, I mean, like, if, you're, if your goal is like, well, actually, right, right now, guys, my goal is to beat Sonic Fox. So, yeah. like, I, I'm going to do what it takes to do that. Yeah. And then maybe we'll go back to Piccolo afterwards when the patch comes yeah. out. I'll see how I do today. And if Piccolo has something to do with it, then he might get the scissors. Not today. After the patch, after the patch, after the patch, because I have hope. I have, I really have hope. There's no way he can be worse. I feel like, if he's worse, oh my god, man. I hope not. I hope uh, he can't be worse. I just, I can't, I just can't believe that he would be worse. I just, uh, well, I mean, I don't know, man. Let's let's hope that Arxis, yeah. you, you know, Arxis patch yeah. is better than I do. So yeah, I don't know what they're like. They're the best character in Guilty Gear got buffed. So that hurts me already. So, and uh, the mid tiers got worse. So just hearing, just knowing that alone, I'm just like, they can't, they can't let this happen. This game is too big. They can't let it happen. But you never know. I mean, Bandai got to do something. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what happens. Help Arxis, please do something, man. I, don't make the the mid tiers worse. That's ridiculous. Don't make Cell better. Don't make 16 better. Like, they're already good enough. I've seen you mention a few times about like the Japanese, like let's beat the Japanese, let's beat the Japanese, let's get together and beat the Japanese, or the JPs as you like to call it. Mm -hmm. um, are you have you played any of them yet? Or, uh, uh, and nope. so when will you do that? And are you looking forward to it? And do you have a game plan? Um, I feel like once I play them, I'll know where I stand because I feel like they take the game to a whole another level. They've always done that for anime games. Like Guilty Gear is literally top eight, always JP every fuck every fucking time. Um, what else? Blaze Blue for the most part, yeah, all JP. Like they're they're gods at anime fighting games. Of course they're gods at other things, but when it comes to anime, they're like always a step ahead of us. But I'm not gonna lie, it's looking promising for USA in this game, definitely. Oh, yeah? Like I, like people like USA has been beating some JP players too, so it's looking it's looking good for us. But when I play them, I'll, I'll know where I stand, like truly. Okay. Cause I haven't like since I haven't traveled yet. It's hard for me to know how actually good I am. Even though I feel like I am really good because I still, like, I kind of dominate here besides Sonic Fox. I really, like, dominate most of the competition here. 
but of course there's a huge world ahead of me so we'll see once i actually get to play in the big leagues with all the other players and stuff so obviously goiji has a huge target on his back is there oh, yeah. anybody else in particular like moke or D uh, oh, dogra or Do dogra Kazunoko? is ridiculous like he, he's using the the team that i would play if i was like if i didn't like piccolo uh, it was just so majin buva g like that team is ridiculous the way he played, like he took a set off of Goichi as well, so yeah. obviously he's a problem. Um, Moke, of course, he I feel he also the last time I saw him play, he played Go Tanks, mm -hmm. so he sees the potential in that, and he I think he uses Cell and Vegeta, I believe. So of course he's a problem because that team is already like revolving around Cell, so Cell is crazy already. Um, but yeah, Goichi, of course, I would love to play him. He he looks he's crazy like. <laughs> he's super, super good. Yeah, he's godlike, right? Yeah, I mean, he, he picked up Manat on day one and was just insane. Yeah, he's like literally, he's the an one of the anime gods. Yeah. Like he's been playing anime games forever, so of course he it transferred over to this game. So let me ask you about that. Actually, I wanted to ask you next about favorite players because that, that's actually people love hearing that. Like, uh, who do you like to watch play? And it doesn't have to be Dragon Ball. Just, just tell me, like, who do you currently like to watch play, and who's your favorite player of all time? Uh, my favorite player of all time. Mm, this is a hard one. Um, I, I, I'm not gonna lie, I really like to watch Smash competitively, like okay. Melee, like Smash 4, like for for Melee, it's definitely Leffen, like okay. Leffen is the villain <laughs> since the beginning, has always been the villain, I've always loved that about him, that he was just always the villain, and he plays this game too, which is great, so he he's like one of my favorite players for sure because he's always talking shit he's always doing this he's always doing that and then he backs it up because he's got like like I, like ever since he came out i was like yo he has to win evo i want him to win evo i want him to win evo but um he, he sometimes things happen you know but <laughs> i always have my money on him basically he's one of my favorites um who else um when it comes to guilty gear um, Nage, which is uh, the literally the Faust God, which is a Guilty Gear character yeah. that I main. He's literally the God. Uh, he's one of my favorite. Like he had, he knows the character inside and out. Every setup, everything, everything that comes with Faust, he knows everything. So he's my favorite for sure, just because he inspired me to play him. Literally, um, of course, uh, the legends. You know, Daigo. Who doesn't love Daigo? He's always he's been around forever, and he's still ridiculous. Um, who else? Um, when it comes to DBZ, I feel like it's too early right now for me to, since I'm a competitor myself, um, uh, may, probably my favorite player right now is probably Apology Man, since he plays Piccolo as well. Ah, yeah. yeah, so as of right now, yeah, but for the most part, I don't really watch this game. Like, oh, I do watch this game, but I don't, I don't have a favorite player just yet because it's so Vegeta. Everything is so Vegeta. Everything is so Kibu. Like, it's hard for them to stand out really but of course the jp players take it to another level like the, who doesn't like watching dogras even though he uses the team everybody uses the, the the people who copied him like i mean the people who use that team is because of him yeah literally so he's got like um goichi of course his neutral is just insane oh also momochi when he was playing this game his neutral impressed the fuck out of me. He was playing the game like it was in DBZ. He was just like, like footsie, shimmy, like all this shit. I was just like, damn, there he's playing this game so different. It, uh, I was super impressed. He, I might have to keep watching him play. Like, I hope he keeps playing because he he looks like he. I I've, I've heard and I really want to interview him, but I've heard that he is a huge, huge Dragon Ball fan, yeah, and uh, he looks like he he's joyous. You know, the playing. way he was playing that game, he wasn't playing DBZ like. You go watch the set between Goichi and him. Like he was, his neutral was just like mind-boggling. I've never seen nobody play like that. I was just like, wow, this guy is godlike at this game. I, I can't wait to play him though. I want to see how well I would do against that godlike neutral that he was showing. I was just like, damn, he is. That's a, that's a champion right there. That's playing for sure. So yeah, definitely Apology Man and definitely Momochi. Those those are my favorite. And Dogura, those are like my favorites. For now. All right. So let's go back a bit, right? So learning the actual game. This is more for people out there who, uh, you know, are looking to to get good. Um, what's the biggest mistake you see people doing in this game, uh, which you wish you wish you could just say to them, look, stop doing that and, and do X or whatever. Um, Super Dash. Online, it's so good. It's hard to punish. 
it, it, it kills everybody. Like, it really does. Like, I was a victim of this, too. Like, I, when I was playing a game online all the time, I was just super dash all the time. Just why not? And then once I started playing offline, I realized it's bad. It's like, it's not bad, but it's just like, damn, it could really be punished. It's a super risk to do that. So super dashing gets people killed. Um, what else that I see online a lot? Um, definitely like, um, like some some people don't like to block. Like I feel like blocking also is a factor since offline is it's easier to block, of course. So when you play online all the time, it's like you don't really practice defense as much as you could be able to since you're not playing offline where that one frame delay actually matters so the um definitely super dash they, like people need to cut that out the game of course you can do it but it's a the riskiest thing you can do like if you do it full screen you're getting you're getting anti or easy but of course when i watch uh, jp players they they still do it but they do it at like perfect times where they know they won't get killed by it yeah so you have to like remember that offline is completely different. You can't just autopilot super dash full screen and then expect not to get anti air, and you can die for it. Like some people's, some people's two uh, H, which is the anti air, um, literally can get you eighty percent. So it, it's a gamble. It's a really big gamble. So people should stop doing that definitely. So uh, when you were talking about learning the game, when you were actually le when you were learning the game, was there a was there, was there any key moments where you went, oh, you know, like an aha moment where you went, oh, wait a second, the game's about this. Uh, uh, again, super dash. <laughs> the, the way because the way people were using that before were like they were just doing it no matter what, no matter what. Is that's the way to get in? Nobody really knew how to how to like deal with it, I guess, until then. But once I played offline, I was like, oh. You can't do that shit like that. It's, it's really a risk to do it. Of course, I still do it because you got to keep your opponent guessing all the time. Yeah. But online, it was like a lot of people's neutral is literally that. Just super dashing at like 50% of the time, they'll just wait for the right time to super dash, which is not the way it should be played. It should be like actual footsies and stuff like that. Actu actual neutral. Yeah. So super dash... Yeah, it's Super Dash once again. <laughs> Super Dash is whack. Yeah. All right, so um, let's talk. Uh, let's talk about general fighting games because I know you play other fighting games. Um, so which ones are you playing right now uh, competitively? Um, definitely, just for the most part, it's just DB DBFZ. Um, I play Guilty Gear still because I love the game. Um, I don't really take it as serious as DBFZ. But I will definitely com keep competing in Guilty Gear, for sure. Did it's, you play Guilty Gear? Uh, Faust. He's like the oh, guy yeah. with the bag head. Yeah, he he's he makes that game so fun for me that I want to compete with him. So, yeah, that's, that's literally how I feel about the game. I love the game as well, but it, it's a little wonky at times. But my, the character saves it for me, so I'll keep using I'll keep playing the game, for sure. Are there any characters coming? Uh, sorry, not characters, sorry. Are there any games coming out soon? You know, obviously we've got uh, Blaze Blue cross tag battle uh we've got arika's game you know there's a mm -hmm. few different things on the horizon have you got your eye on any of those um, games bb tag of course because of course it's persona characters are in the game so yeah. i have to play it because yeah. literally because that's the game that made me play fighting games i have to represent persona okay. so um yeah that as of right now that's the only one that's announced but i hope they make a per, another persona fighting game i i really hope they do i really do so what's your what's your deal so talking about that right because you've got you sponsored by energy nrg yes. so congratulations on that you, right uh so you're obviously going to get out to more events yes. are you what's your deal are you at college like what's your what's going on in your life um, as of right now um i have i haven't like really worked because uh, the day I decided to go out and play fighting games offline for the first time was like two days before that I got fired <laughs> from my like old job. Oh, wow. So I was just like, okay, um, I guess let me try play offline now that I have the time. And yeah. it, you see how far I am now. Just in that short period of time, it really it is. I'm really grateful for that opportunity yeah. to actually like actually fly out and stuff and play other players like meet other players of course that i've always seen in in uh, online and stuff on youtube and like it's crazy how far i got in that short period of time but dbfz is like really big that's how much do you play every day now then um well even when i was working i was playing a good like three or four hours a day oh wow so that that is a lot but nowadays i play a lot <laughs> since i stream again i don't really count as much since it's online is like 
whatever now. But um, I still, like, I would stream for a long time, like nine hours, eight hours type of thing. So I play, I play the game a lot now. So uh, let me ask you this. Do you play general video games? Do you, uh, and what, what are your, some of your favorites? Um, my favorite, um, old or new? I mean, you can, of course. What, what do you play at the moment, and what's your favorite game of all time? Uh, uh, at, at the moment, I literally just play DBFZ. DBFZ, uh, Guilty Gear, and Persona 5, uh, which is the RPG. All right, non, oh, the, the RPG. Okay, I was yeah, going to say, yeah. non-fighting games. Let's mm -hmm. talk about non-fighting games. Like, yeah. Do you play, like, at the moment, you're training a lot in DBFC, mm -hmm. but, like, uh, you, you play a little bit of... Yeah, uh, sometimes I stream it too. I mean, that game is just amazing. Persona so. Five. Yeah, the, okay. it's an RPG. It's a, it's literally amazing. So I have it at home and I haven't played it yet. <laughs> yeah, please do. It's it's amazing. Like it's so good. Um, I play that. Sometimes I play a couple shooters, like you know, Call of Duty here and there, but it, it's stale now. Do you rate yourself pretty good at uh, uh, shooters like Call of Duty? Oh, yeah, I'm godlike. Mm, You're godlike. I'm godlike. Like my KD is <laughs> my KD is off the chain. Like. What is it? Um, in World War Two is like 180, 180. So that's 1.8. Okay. Yeah, 1.8. Yeah. Like it is decent. It's yeah, pretty that's decent. Good. That, that's, good. that's what like I started playing. Like yeah, I, yeah. like before fighting games, I was playing stuff like that. You know, Halo, Gears of War, like all the all the shooters that are out there. I was playing them for the most part. Um, favorite game of all time. This is a hard one. Uh, it's like super hard to rank them, but probably Mega Man X, just cause the the soundtrack is so godlike. The gameplay is godlike. I grew up playing it. I beat. I still play it now and then. Sometimes, whenever I get the chance, and it's coming out too for PS4 again. So of course I'm playing that. Um, but yeah, um, probably also another one of my favorite games. Also is probably Phoenix Wright. I'm not sure if you ever Phoenix heard Wright, of that. Yeah, yeah, uh, the, the yeah, it, yeah that yeah. game is godlike. Again, made by Capcom because the music yeah. is godlike. The gameplay is godlike, like all that. It, that was when like Capcom was like so just godlike at everything, yeah, pretty yeah, much. Yeah. yeah. So those are like my two favorite games of all time, and of course Persona, uh, yeah. Persona Four, or um, the fighting game and the RPG. Those are my favorite games ever, because again, the RPG is amazing, and then the the fighting game got me into fighting games. So it. Uh, those are definitely like. I need to check out Phoenix Wright actually. Yeah. Phoenix Wright is amazing. Like, oh my god. That, at, at a time, at a point in time, I was just like, yeah, I'm about to be a lawyer. That's how cool. <laughs> that's literally how cool this game is that I want to be a lawyer. But then I came to reality, like, oh, that's actually like hard. Like, yeah, that's, oh, that's hard. really, really hard. So yeah, I was just like, friends lawyers are super, super yeah, hard. that's like I'm crazy. <laughs> wouldn't wish that life on anyone. Yeah. Um, all right. So talk about your. Can you? Talk a little bit about can you get a window into your life? So obviously, like central in your life right now is fighting games. Mm -hmm. What else are you into? Like, what other stuff are you into? You know, apart from losing like half your body weight. <laughs> uh, like, do do you you know are you you know films, music? Like, what what do you like uh, to do? I'm not gonna lie. I used to produce a couple beats for music, like oh, for did? rap. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's still still in the works. I'm not gonna lie. I might go back to it. Okay. Since I have the free time now, um, the production side of hip hop. Yeah, I love. I oh man, I love hip hop so much. I really do. And so I was making beats at one point in time. So let me ask you a question about hip hop because I I grew up with like you know, lot, I grew up in England, mm -hmm. but like you know I'm much older than you, right? Mm -hmm. So I grew up with like a lot of uh, like the early '90s, mid '90s, mm -hmm. so early '90s to mid '90s hip hop. Yeah. Well, what's your who are your like favorite artist? My favorite artist. Uh, since you know I'm a young man, <laughs> yeah. my favorite like artists are people from now. But if I were to name like like legends, um, from the from like the '90s, like of course I gotta gotta give props to like Mob Deep. You know they're from this oh area. God. I love Mob yeah. Deep. Like since they're especially since I'm so close to the area, I'm like I I understand yeah. you. I completely understand this shit. Um, Mob Deep. I got it. I got it in my head now. Yeah, you know Ice Cube. Of course, you gotta love yeah. all them. Yeah. And, you gotta love all his old tracks like he's ridiculous um nas nas i haven't given him like that you know since of course i'm a young man okay. like i haven't like ventured in super deep into okay. him but of course ice cube i ventured super deep mob deep of course yeah. i love them um more modern artists like you know of course kanye of course okay. uh even though he's like Tweet. yeah he's yeah. he's iffy right now um Kanye, uh, Kendrick Lamar is ridiculous. I feel like he is crazy. Um, when it, those are like the lyrical type of uh, rappers. Uh, but for the most part, since 
since you know the the lyrical rappers they take a while to drop things sadly they take like two years to drop yeah, things yeah, yeah. so in that in that time you know the tra it, what's trendy now is like the trap beats or whatever which i'm sure not a lot of like older people like since it's yeah, yeah, like yeah. it's really trendy sound but you like what you grow up with that's just the way it is yeah the way life is you'll get to a, believe me you'll get to a point yeah. where you where you're like what what you're comparing yeah. this you're comparing this person to kendrick lamar how dare you yeah. and i'm like you're comparing Kendrick Lamar to whoever, yeah, you know, like, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Just the way it is. Right now, I'm super young, so I don't understand that at all. <laughs> you'll but, get that, you'll get that. But when it comes to, like, the the trap or the trendy type, uh, type sounds and stuff, like, I love Travis Scott. Like, I have a sweater of him that yeah. I've came with into the first NLBC, which people, some people noticed. So I had, I love Travis, uh, love Playboy Cardi. Like, all, all those, like, I would say not lyrical rappers, like, of course, I got to give love to them. But yeah, those are like my favorites for sure. When it comes to the old and the new, Travis, Playboy Cardi's the new. Um, Kanye's not really that new, but I still yeah. love him. Kendrick Lamar, he's kind of not that new, but a little bit. Um, I, I love so much more artists from before. I just it, this is not coming to my mind right now. Can but, I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. do, you, do you produce? Do you did you do you know? Uh, sorry, do you play musical instruments? Oh uh, yeah, I actually grew up playing drums. Okay, because. There seems to, I mean, I think people know this by now, but mm. it seems to be a big link between people who grow up with musical instruments mm. and uh, can play fighting games because the combos. Really? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it's a thing. It's le it's a legit thing. I, like I never thought of that. My no, understanding honestly. is that Desk, you know, Desk, like the Combo King, right? Mm. You know, like apparently he plays musical instruments. A lot of uh, players who are really, you know, like the combos are just very very natural to them because of the yeah. rhythm, because of the way that you train yeah. it. Like these are people who grew up le learning like musical instruments. Yeah, I, I never thought about that comparison, but comparison. But yeah, maybe you're right because I did play a lot of drums when I was younger, and it's rhythmic. Like yeah, and then now that I'm thinking about it, yeah, you're right. Like it's literally like a whole pattern. It's like almost playing a song when you're doing a combo. And it's the same thing. It's the same. Like when you first learn that stuff, mm -hmm. it's the to me, it's the same thing. It's like when you're learning how to play a guitar or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like you just keep doing it. And you just keep doing it. And you just yeah, keep doing no, it until eventually it's right. muscle memory. Yeah. yeah. So damn, that's crazy. I didn't think of that, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do play wild. drums. Yeah. It is a bit wild. Look, we're gonna have to wrap this up because yeah. it's almost an hour. So um, listen, great fun talking to you. Thank you, man. Thank and, you. And uh, we're gonna say goodbye to these guys. It was so. a pleasure. It was a pleasure. See Thank you later, you. guys. See you later.